In today's video, we are going to go over some example problems for calculating resistance and resistivity. I already have videos that I've made for an explanation of resistance and resistivity. I think what goes with that also is Ohm's law and electric current. And I also have videos for those which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. Now, before we get started, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel, support my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click on that red icon in the bottom right hand corner there. Click on the notifications button. You'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you very much. Let's get started. We have some example problems for resistance and resistivity. Very basic, start out with the very first one here. It says, what is the resistance of an aluminum wire that is 10 meters long and has a diameter of three millimeters. Now this is the equation which we use to calculate the resistance. Once again, if you're not familiar with this equation, you might wanna watch the video where I went over an explanation of this equation, which you can link to once again in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But it says that the resistance is equal to rho. Rho is a symbol for the resistivity times the length divided by the area, the cross-sectional area. Okay, so we kind of just have to plug the values in. You have to remember, and maybe you need to look it up, or maybe it will be given to you, that the resistivity of aluminum is 2.65 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. And that's not ohms per meter, it's ohm meters. And then also you'll notice we're given the length, but here we need the area. Now most wire, we consider wire to have a uh, round cross-sectional or a circular cross-sectional area, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're going to substitute this in here. I like to just calculate the radius first, or just show you, let's do that one time here. We have the diameter is three millimeters. That means the radius is half, or 1.5 millimeters, excuse me. And we need to have that in meters. Now millimeters is a thousandth, so we can simply put down 1.5 times 10 to the minus three meters. Okay, that's the radius of a wire that has a diameter of three millimeters. Remember, the radius is half of the diameter. Okay, so now we have everything we need and we can just plug those values in. Okay, R, which is the resistance, which is what we're trying to calculate, is the resistivity. This is the resistivity that we're given. And we're going to multiply that times the length, which is 10 meters. It has to be in meters. So we already gave it to you in meters, so you get it in meters. And then it's pi r squared. This is pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. And it's just 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Do the math. And you should get 0 0.0375 ohms. Okay, if you think about it here, the meters are going to cancel. Meter times meter is meter squared. Meter squared on the bottom. When you square that, you get meter squared. And then both of those will cancel. You're left with ohms, which is simply... 3.75 times 10 to the minus 2 ohms. Okay? There. I think the really the trickiest part of that is figuring out and converting from the here the diameter to the radius, remembering to square the radius and all that kind of stuff. But pretty straightforward, just plug the numbers in. Okay. Okay, here we go with problem number two. And this says we have copper wiring in a house, usually has a diameter of approximately 1.5 millimeters. And we would like to know what length of copper wire would have a resistance of 1 ohm. Okay, now we know that it's copper. And we can look up and copper has a resistivity of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 8. So now we know we have the resistance we're given. We're given the resistivity. We're given the uh, diameter here so we can get the area. We want to solve this one for the length. And that means the length, if we do that algebraically, the length is going to be equal to the resistance times the area divided by the resistivity. Now, in the previous video, I went over how to calculate the, or how to get the diameter uh, and the, from or the radius and everything from the diameter. This one says it's 1.5 millimeters. All you got to do is take half of that because that will give you the radius and then I'll multiply it times 10 to minus 3 because millimeters 1,000th of a meter. So we're going to get that is what our radius is in meters. So it's the resistance is 1 ohm. Then this is area pi r squared. The radius in meters is 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Remember to square, okay, 
just the radius, and then divide that by the resistivity of copper, 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters, and you get that that length would be equal to just about 105 meters. Remember, you have an ohm on the bottom, an ohm on the top. They cancel. When you square this, you're going to have two meters on the top and one on the bottom, or you have meters squared on the top and one meter on the bottom, and those one of those will cancel, and you're left with meters. Okay? So that is number two. Or problem number three, it says that we have a 20 meter length of wire. And that 20 meter length of wire has a diameter of three millimeters and it has a resistance of one point, excuse me, 3.12 ohms. And we want to know what is the resistivity of that wire. So we're given the resistance, we're given the length, we're given the diameter, so we can get the area. So we're solving this time here for the resistance. Activity, and that means that the resistivity would be equal to the resistance times the cross-sectional area divided by the length of that wire. Now, we're given the resistance. It's 3.12 ohms. Once again, with the area is pi r squared. This is pi. This is r squared. Pi, we're just going to leave that as pi. And then to get the radius in meters, we're just going to take half of the diameter, which is 1.5 is half of 3, and then multiply that times 10 to the minus 3, and we get that the radius of that wire in meters is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Don't forget to square that and divide it by the length, which is 20 meters, and then you will end up with the resistivity of that wire being 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6 ohm meters. Okay, you have ohms here, that's this ohm here, and we have meters squared up here, divided by meters, and you'll end up with one meter, one of those meters will cancel. So we have 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6 ohm meters. Now for our last problem, this is two parts, we're going to do two things. It says, what is the cross-sectional area and diameter of a wire, of tungsten wire, tungsten wire, that has a length of one meter, has a resistance of 0 0.32 ohms. So we want to know the cross-sectional area, and then we also want to know the diameter. All right, so you can see we have our base equation here for resistance, which is just the resistivity times the length divided by the area. And it says the first thing is what is the cross-sectional area? So we're going to solve this equation for the area. You might remember algebraically if you have this kind of equation where you have a single factor on this side and then uh, a fraction, we can just switch these two, and that gives us that the area is going to be equal to rho, the resistivity, times the length divided by the resistance, and we're talking this time about tungsten, and this is the resistivity of tungsten. I put a W here. That is the uh, element symbol for tungsten, which had W stands for Wolfram, but in English we call it tungsten. Okay, so we're just going to plug the values in now. Uh, rho, I put the rho out in the front here, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. And then the length we said was 1 meter, and the resistance is 0 0.32 ohms. And that will give us a cross-sectional area of 1.75 times 10 to the minus 7 meters squared. Okay, so that's the cross-sectional area. And now we want to know the diameter because we talk about wire or usually things that are circular. We talk about usually the diameter or the radius, but in this case, it's usually given as a diameter for wires. We're going to get the diameter. This is our um, cross-sectional area. We have our equation is pi r squared. So basically, we want to take this equation and solve it for the radius because then we can multiply that times 2 and get the diameter because the diameter is twice the radius or the radius is half of the diameter. So if I take this equation, divide both sides by pi, then I get the area over pi, and then I take the square root of both sides, I get the r, the radius is equal to the square root of the area divided by pi. All right? Like that. Okay, now the radius is there going to be equal to the square root of, now the area, we, we figured out earlier the cross-sectional area, okay, is 1.7, that was the previous slide, I placed that value in here, I'm going to divide that by pi, and I get that the radius, okay, if I do that, then I can uh, take the square root and I get rid of the meter squared. And I get that the radius is 
2.36 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Now we want the diameter. Remember the diameter is twice the radius, so that means the diameter is 4.72 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. And uh, I'm going to now convert that into millimeters because oftentimes it's given in millimeters. And there are 1,000 millimeters in one meter, and that means that that is 0 0.45 millimeters, or just about half of a millimeter, okay? So there you go. That is how you can figure out the cross-sectional area and the diameter. Okay, I hope you found those four problems helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Down there below, give me a thumbs up for this video. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click on the notifications bell while you're at it there too. Thank you very much. And don't forget, sharing is caring. That's right. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.